Amen. That's a profound word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm kind of stuck on that right now myself. Amen. I don't know if I'm even going to this one. You think in terms of taking care of your mother. Amen. But I want to ask you something, though. Were you there when they crucified my Jesus? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? From the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus hung on the cross, miserable and helpless. He was dying the death of the cursed, the death that was carried out on those who were evil, hateful, and unwanted. He hung there without hope, comfortless, and, and lonely. Now I can imagine the crowds of people who came to witness this murderous execution. There must have been thousands gathered there on Calvary's hill. Some were just talking and pointing and some were walking about aimlessly, dumbfounded and confused, wrapped up in their own thoughts. Some pitied him, shaking their heads. Some who loved him and, and truly cared about him were weeping in sorrow, crying and hugging, trying to comfort each other. And there were those who were laughing and, and drinking wine and gambling, while others were jeering and cursing and spitting, filled with hate and malice, sadistic and uncaring. It was midday when the sun gave up its light and refused to shine. Darkness was upon the land the crowd was bewildered, perplexed, amazed, mystified, and, and puzzled as death was slowly taking its toll. For three more hours, Jesus hung on the cross in torment and pain from the crown of his head, pierced with the wreath of thorns from the lacerations on his back, inflicted by the flogging and lashes of whips, from the nails that penetrated the flesh of his hands and feet, his blood dripped down his face and neck, dripped down on his chest and legs, dripped down on the altar of the cross. The sacrificial lamb of God was being offered up. Then, at three o'clock in the afternoon, the ninth hour, Jesus' soul was as dark as the blackness of the day surrounding him. When he had sunk to the deepest, darkest depths of despair, he cried out with the cry of dereliction. He cried out with the cry of desertion. He cried out with the cry of abandonment. He cried out with the cry of desolation. He cried out with the cry of the lonely. He cried out with a loud voice, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Those agonizing words still send a cold shudder of terror through the bones. 
They slapped him in the face. And they spit on him. And he never said a mumbling word. They whipped him and ripped his skin. And he never said a mumbling word. They forced a crown made of thorns into his scalp. And he never said a mumbling word. They smashed nails through his hands and feet. And he never said a mumbling word. But when he realized that God was no longer with him, he cried out to the loud voice, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus was forsaken because he had taken upon himself all the sins of the world. The sins of times past, the sins of time present, and the sins of times to come. He was forsaken for all the fornication. He was forsaken for all of the adultery. He was forsaken for all of the greed. He was forsaken for all of the drunkenness. He was forsaken for all of the idolatry. He was forsaken for all of the witchcraft. He was forsaken for all of the drug abuse. He was forsaken for all the works of the flesh. He was forsaken because God, refusing to look upon sin, turned his back on Jesus. This was the gravest spiritual tragedy in the history of the universe. God the Father separated from God the Son. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I can imagine. Jesus uttered these words with emphasized anguish and a straining voice of torment with pain streaking down his arms and shooting up his legs and centered at his heart. But he did it for me and he did it for you. He did it for all the people throughout time and eternity. Jesus, who is the Christ, the anointed of God, gave his life so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. He gave his life so that we may be cleansed from the filth of our sins. He gave his life to bring us back to God. He gave his life so that we may be able to walk in the beautiful and magnificent light of the Prince of Peace, the mighty God, and the everlasting Father. Whosoever will, let him come and receive the salvation of the Lord. Come and receive the newness of life. Come and receive a, a renewing of your mind. Come and receive the spirit of truth. Come and receive the gift of the grace of God. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. May the Lord bless you today and each and every day. Amen.